Okay. So, the last section here on chapter four um, is kind of something we talked about in chapter one a little bit. We talked about kind of like, um, like rights and responsibilities and the difference between that. You know, it tends to confuse things a little bit. What, they, what they're doing here is at the end, they're kind of taking the amendments that we've talked about up to this point and kind of compiling them into this kind of idea of duties and responsibilities, all right? Um, which is, a, is, is kind of a little different than what they did just slightly in chapter one. But on the test, I got a couple questions, a few questions where it's like, is this, a, is this considered a duty or is this a responsibility, all right? And so it's like kind of a 50-50 thing. So on, uh, you know, the first thing I talked about is like duties of citizenship, all right, which is uh, the definition here, the things that you, you must do, or, you, you know, in this sense, you have these things that, that, that are kind of required to ensure rights and freedoms are protected. All right? And again, in a lot of these cases here with these amendments, the goal is to kind of provide, it should be providing for, for freedoms, providing for rights. Right? We talked about the one that probably was you know, a little limiting in that sense would be uh, the uh, 18th Amendment, which, which you know, prohibited the sale, distribution, consumption of alcohol, but that was kind of rectified with the 21st Amendment. All these other ones, the idea is kind of providing something for people, protection uh, and such. All right? And so a few things that are mentioned in the tax as what would be classified as a duty uh, like, for example, obeying the law. They mentioned this as a, you know, as a kind of a, and you can think also too, with these duties is something that if you don't do these things, there's generally like, I would say maybe like a kind of consequences if that, uh, maybe a punishment that's kind of goes along with this. So if you don't obey the laws that are listed like kind of in the constitution and such, and, the, the, and again, legal codes like constitutions and charters and things like that, the idea is to create some order to society, all right? Uh, if you don't obey the law, the, you know, again, some of the kind of the consequences would be you'd be, get arrested, you could lose your freedom and stuff. But you have to also keep in mind, like with laws here, we've had, like as a nation, we've had some laws on the books that as time goes on have been determined to be uh, probably not kind of adhering to their concept of liberty and freedom. And we had a law on slavery. We had a law on basically uh, denying people certain rights based on gender or race or creed and stuff. So that's the kind of a thing that they kind of put in the in the textbook without really doing much, like kind of like clarification. But the idea behind this is a kind of a duty is that if you don't obey certain laws, then you there's a consequence to that. Attending school, they mentioned in here, which you probably probably is not that crazy of an idea here. But the idea with this is that. This whole endeavor where I bore you to death with all this information is the goal here is to try to kind of create an educated citizenry, all right? So the information that you get from this class, hopefully you'll be able to take that out into the real world as you get older, as you become, as you guys become part of the kind of the, the, the kind of franchise, if you will, the voting populace. Um, you know, the idea is that, that, that I should do no harm, as doctors would say. Uh, with providing as, as information, but this information, you do with it what you will, right? Uh, and so, but the idea here is that we have, like, you're supposed to, like, what is it, 16? You can drop out of school. It used to be 16. I didn't even look at it now. Um, but up until that, I mean, it's like, the reason you have to go to school is not just to bore you, but the, the whole goal is to kind of, like, create a citizenry that is educated, all right? Unfortunately, things like social media and that tend to, uh, tend to kind of undercut that at times with misinformation. All right, uh, but that was something that's kind of for another chapter. All right, uh, another one: paying taxes is considered a duty of citizenry, of citizenship. All right, obviously, if you don't pay taxes, there could be an issue. What I mean, you did, yes. Um, they're still underneath there. Somebody was like, "Who those shoes are?" I didn't notice until yesterday. Uh, so, um, any idea what what do taxes? What's the purpose of taxes? Uh, what 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 are what are you supposed to get for paying taxes? Right. Yeah. So, like you know, it's basically taxes are part of the, what what essentially funds the government. All right. On a local level, you pay taxes to things like you know trash pickup, paving the roads. You know, if your house is on fire, somebody will come there and put it out. All right. Uh, police, me. All right. Your you know property taxes pay for my salary and such, pay for schools and that. All right. So. Um, that's the idea, like where does government kind of come in with that, you know, and then federal taxes and such like, you know, things for 
paper armed for, uh, forces, uh, postal, all that other stuff. All right. Serving in the armed forces um, as a duty, um, that has kind of changed here, all right? And the idea is like kind of like kind of provide for kind of national security and such, all right? Now, prior to, what was it, about 1972, all right, uh, what generally people had gone through, mainly young men, is that if you are eligible for, uh, for the draft, all right? Uh, which we had as a policy in this country up until the early 70s, all right? Uh, now we have what is generally considered a kind of all volunteer service, military service, but still we have something there that when it, it's, it's from, for men mainly, uh, is the uh, selective service. Act. So when you, when, when you guys turn 18, when men turn 18, you're expected to register for selective service. That's just in case we need you to a certain extent, all right? Uh, you have to do that. I had a friend actually, when I remember when we were 18, um, he didn't do it. He just forgot he knew it. Um, somebody came to his door to remind him. Now it's a little bit easier uh, to do with, like, you know, kind of like you you're kind of registering online and stuff like that. Um, but then again, things have changed here. Also, you know, for a long time, our military was segregated. For all women couldn't serve, and that has changed over time as well. All right. Um, another thing that was kind of thrown in there is this idea of kind of like, um, particularly like sacrificing during sort of like particularly like World War II. In World War II, there was um, there people were asked to ration uh, for the war uh, effort. So my parents, like my father, fought in World War II, and um, my mom uh, remember like I asked her like just like doing like an interview thing, you know, when she was older, and asked her it was like you know when uh, when dad came back from the war, you know, uh, were you happy and stuff? She you know they had, little, they had my brother and stuff, and she's like yeah, but what for the reasons I thought she was happy because she could wear pantyhose on a regular basis. Because they ask women not to wear pantyhose on certain days um, to save on netting, uh, like nylon for netting for the war effort. People are encouraged to basically refrain from eating meat or gas and stuff like that. Um, that would be a little harder to do kind of today, right, uh, in that sense. Uh, and so uh, that was the thing that was kind of thrown in there as a kind of a duty, which in, in reality was a, probably a little bit more of a responsibility, so to speak. All right. So um, I think the last one here, oh, appearing in court is listed here as a duty. Uh, and we'll talk about this more detail when we get to chapter seven, when we talk about the judicial branch. One thing that's kind of common for people, right, uh, is serving on, on jury duty, which is basically you're being, and we'll talk about juries and, and the importance of that in the, our judicial branch here. Uh, it's when you're called upon to help decide on a criminal or civil court. Again, this was kind of laid out in the sixth and seventh amendments there. Uh, I don't know if anybody. And you, you're you, usually your jury. You're, you're a registered voter, all right. And they pick your pick your name, all right. Um, I don't know if any of your parents have been on jury duty. They people generally not like it. I've been called twice, but it was like 20 years between the two, all right. Uh, and so uh, uh, we'll talk about this more detail when we talk about chapter seven. So this is the idea when they say jury of your peers, all right. That's the idea is that people are supposed to kind of like also the idea of you're supposed to be impartial and and unbiased in certain cases, so they kind of weed people out uh, from a larger kind of jury pool there. But that is kind of listed as a duty. If you don't show up for jury duty, there can be consequences to that, all right? They can come to your house, they can fine you and stuff like that. So um, it's encouraged. Uh, some people get out of jury duty for whatever reasons, health reasons or, or something, you know, but uh, this is something that is kind of part of our kind of judicial branch there. All right. And then uh, responsibilities, how they separate duties and responsibilities. Responsibilities are things you should do, but they're not required by law. All right. And so these things are, again, these kind of encouraged, if you will, right. to kind of, uh, kind of for the betterment of the kind of citizenry at whole. Right. So you think of duties as things that there can be consequences if you don't do it for responsibilities, and yeah, you should do it. All right. That's not necessarily a, a kind of a court, you know, like a judicial uh, uh, kind of like fine or anything like that. All right. And so, again, they kind of split these kind of like kind of label some of these. Uh, one responsibility is voting, which is also a right. Right. With some of these rights comes responsibilities. All right. So you're not you don't have to vote. There's some countries where it is mandatory for voting. Like countries, I believe, like New Zealand. Now, obviously, they get like almost 100% of their population voting here. Here, this is this is not the case, all right? 
Uh, and so uh, in this last election, unfortunately, there's been some misinformation about this. There's there's states that are kind of dealing with what they, you know, trying to kind of limit people in voting. All right. Um, this is going to be something that's going to be being played out in this next four years. All right. Uh, being informed is another kind of like responsibility. Again, the kind of like the taking kind of interest in key issues. Um, unfortunately, like I said, with the uh, kind of emergence of social media, where you get your information and who is providing that information and what their kind of like their agenda is, is always being something that's always like kind of like debated. All right. Uh, but again, that's the idea is like trying to stay informed uh, on the issues, which would help you kind of make your decision when it comes to voting. It kind of like plays into that. Uh, another responsibility with essentially taking part of government yourself. Again, the idea with government here, this is kind of basically a kind of like in democracies, it's, uh, it requires uh, a level of uh, participation. Uh, um, so, and this could be anything from basically like, you know, running for school board, library board, to run for president. So, all right. Um, you know, people kind of being part of like uh, councils and stuff like that, just kind of taking part in uh, in that. And then the other one is uh, kind of volunteering, helping your community. All right, this is an idea that is like kind of encouraging that you know, and we see this kind of play out when we have natural disasters like what's going on in Texas. We even play this out here, like Chaos Strong is a prime example of this. If anybody's like kind of like being part of Chaos Strong, um, that's basically kind of you know, like school, our school community, but also the community as a whole. Uh, and so again, that's like kind of with this responsibility is kind of encouraged. And then um, the last one I think here is uh, respecting, protecting other people's rights. All right, this idea here is that uh, when when one group or one person's you know, right, rights are are infringed upon or denied, is kind of a denying of kind of all of our rights to a certain extent. All right, uh, and so this one is usually played out in a lot of times like in the courts, but it's also played out in the streets. All right, people kind of protesting and such. Uh, but again, like with this, you know, the idea of like trying to, with our First Amendment rights, there are certain things that can be crossed. You can protest an election, but if you essentially kind of storm a capital, there may be some issues with that. You know, same thing if, you know, destroying public property. Is so these these kind of questions will be, the, I think I got three of them maybe on the top. But it's like, is this a right or is this a duty or responsibility? All right. So it's just like kind of like a 50 50 thing. So uh, tomorrow we'll review, we'll do, an, we'll do a Kahoot, and then Friday we'll test. Sound good? Did you guys get that out there? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll review, try to get some uh,